be doing a video that I want to make as detailed as possible. I just don't know how detailed and how long I'm going to uh, physically be able to stand while I do this video. I am standing, which I actually hate doing in videos because I feel like, I don't know, when someone's standing, I feel like they're like ready to go. They're like, oh, go, okay, I'm going to just do this real quick and then I got to like jet because I'm standing and I'm ready to go. As for the sitting, it's like, okay, we're going to just talk. We're going to have a little chit chat. Um, so, but I, I, I physically can't sit. And that is uh, for the reason that I had um, plastic surgery uh, once again and a lot of people were wondering what I got done and all that stuff. And I think I'm going to make, I'm going to be making a, a couple of videos like about this, like so this is not going to be the only one. I had thought about just, you know, because I haven't, I hadn't said anything about this surgery and I, before or really even after because I was kind of like, one, I didn't even know if I was going to even, like, tell anybody because it's such a, I think it's the one class of surgery that people get judged for the most because they call you lazy or they think you're shallow or, I mean, for me personally, it'll be, you're a lazy bitch, like, <clears throat> you just paid to get, you know, fat sucked out of you. I know a lot of skinny people who get what I've gotten done, um, you know, so it's, it's definitely a vanity, which all has my surgery is Botox, lips, anything is a vanity thing, but... Um, this one is seen in a different light for whatever reason as opposed to like breast implants like that's oh I get that but like if you I don't know um, I guess because people maybe especially people who work at the gym and stuff like that they, they think it's like a way of like cheating but let me tell you it's anything but cheating to get the body you want uh, and I'm going to explain that a little more in this video so I'm officially two weeks post-op today um, I had mine done two weeks ago and I uh, have my my two week, well technically it's going to be two week and one day post op <clears throat> appointment tomorrow. So I thought I would just, um, and hopefully I get some before and after photos tomorrow so I can show you guys kind of like the progress. Wait, let me tell you what I got done, but before, let me tell you before that. Number one though, the progress of this surgery is not instant. Unlike all other surgeries, this is not, you're not going to see instant results. When you get your boobs done, you have implants put in you, you see them right away. You're going to see those results. You're going to be happy. You're like, oh, I got these big boobies. Yes, this is not like that at all, um, which can be disheartening. And I'm kind of in that disheartening phase at the moment, um, which, again, is why I kind of want to hesitate to wait to make the video like six weeks, but I knew I was going to be having different feelings in six weeks when I was done with the recovery. So I was like, no, Trish, you need to do a video today. Like, what you're feeling now? Because I tell everybody who asked me in my real life this, so I thought, why not share with you guys? And also, like I said, I was going to keep it private. Maybe, but you know, at the end of the day, because a lot of people like, you don't owe us anything, and I appreciate that so much that, like, you don't owe us anything, you don't tell us anything, but, and I, you're right, I don't, and no one does, no one should have to share what they do with their body, but I like being open. I, I realize that, like, sometimes you're like, you share too much, and you don't need to share as much, but I like it. I like sharing my life. It's weird. It's like, maybe it's a narcissism in me that I just want everyone to know everything I'm doing and how exciting everything is that I'm doing because everything I do is exciting to me. So, I don't know. I, like, maybe someone else will find it exciting too. So maybe that's just narcissistic. I don't know. I don't know the words of like privacy because I just, but I like it. So like this is me, like this is a big part of my life and I like sharing my life. So it's it's more than just views and YouTube. It's like I actually like sharing my life. I've always have. So what did I get done? Okay guys, here it is. Well, I did get liposuction. I got liposuction on my underarms, the back wings, um, which I actually saw on the guy who did my breast implants, a website. Um, uh, I saw that they did that and I was like, oh shit, I didn't know this was like a thing that you could do. Like, I swear to goodness, I know that sounds really stupid or maybe naive or something, but like I didn't, I didn't even think like to get, I, oh, by the way, first and foremost, always have aided my arms. It's not a thing because I know everyone, a lot of people tell me, oh my god, her arms are the size of my thighs or whatever. Um, but it's always been insecurity. My arms have definitely gotten worse, but oh my gosh, from when I was seven years old, I, I wouldn't wear short sleeve shirts to school. I wouldn't, I would wear sweatshirts like in the summer when kids were wearing tank tops and stuff to school, I was wearing sweatshirts because I was very self-conscious of my arms at seven years old. So that's been my number one insecurity before my tummy bore for anything was always my arms. And as of late, um... I've just been more insecure to him. I've, I always have been. If you watch my boyfriend take from last year, the one year update, um, I literally asked, you know, my ex. I was just like, oh, like, what's my biggest insecurity? That was like a question. He's like, her arms. Like, everyone just knows this about me. Like, my arms are a thing, which you don't think someone has, like, insecurities about their arms, but I did. And, um, so I got them done. So now, this is another thing you need to keep in mind. So these are my arms, obviously, right? A lot of you might be like, that kind of looks the same, which is how I feel. I'm like, uh, okay, so I paid all this money. They hurt like a mofo. The week after my surgery was the worst week of hell and pain and torment I've ever gone through. 
um, which I'll get to. And there's so much I need to get to, so that's why it's going to be, like, multiple series, because I just know that I'm going to miss out on stuff and everything. But, um, yeah, so I got my arms. And so, oh, this is the thing. So I just finished my two-week, my second week of post-op. And week number two of liposuction is when you're, what they say is that you're the most swollen. Um, so you swell up. A lot of times people are even bigger and their their clothes are even tighter than when before they went in surgery because you have so much fluid in you. Another thing all you Google doctors can look up, liposuction, for those of you like, you're so lazy, you could have just worked out. And liposuction isn't a, <laughs> you're skinny, like here, pay some money, we suck the fat out of you, you're skinny. I will say, like my my back and my, um, my midsection has been sculpted tremendously. Um, but that's basically what liposuction is. It's kind of giving you like this shape. It's sucking out fat cells, yes, but if you go back to the way you were eating before, I'll speak for myself, the way I was eating before, like burgers and fries, especially during your recovery. Recovery, you have to be so strict, like very, very strict. Like just, I can only, I, I just drink waters um, just to keep, because you're bloated and you want to keep that blowing down. So I only drink waters. I need to drink lots and lots and lots of water because you are very, very bloated and you know, you also are losing a lot of liquids, especially that first week when you have all the drains in. You're losing a lot of fluid, and you just really have to replenish. I got dehydrated. I got really sick. I got lightheaded um, because, and I was drinking so much water, and I, I still was getting dehydrated and losing fluid. Um, and I'll get to that too in a second. But um, so yeah, so week two, you're still swollen. Now this is like a Under Armour com uh, like sh compression shirt. I've just got it like Dicks or like not Dicks. My mom called it Dicks. It's um. That Dix is a sporting store in. I don't know, maybe it's bigger now. I know it's in my old hometown, Rockford, but where did we get this? Like Sports Authority? Maybe it was Dix. I don't know. It doesn't matter, no. Um, but basically, when we went for my week, no, no, it was like my five day follow up to get my drains out. Um, I had this like these arm garments on that only came up to here, but they're kind of cutting off my thing, the circulation, and um, it can cause indentation and stuff like that too. And it, it was just really uncomfortable. It was like strapping here. It was really uncomfortable. So, so the nurse and the doctor was just like, "Oh, you can just get like a compression garment, which actually goes all the way um, through." If I step back, it's gonna be a little out of focus, but it's gonna go all the way um, through. Not through. What am I talking about? All the way to my hip. Sorry, guys. I'm still on some of my medications. So I'm like, you know, um, and I, uh, not in I'm so sorry. On my uh, pain meds because I actually stopped taking pain meds um, pretty early on, um, which was a thing a mistake. But I have a couple left, and I do get really, really sore when you first wake up, which is what I just did. When you first wake up, it feels like for me still, it feels like I got kind of like cut. It kind of, just for a minute when you stand up, it just feels like you were like cut in the stomach, and you're just like, oh, I can't straighten up. Like it feels like you kind of. I wouldn't say stabbing, that's a little dramatic, but you know, it just feels like you were cut. I mean, you were cut. <laughs> I was cut open, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just like sometimes like a little painful. So I took some, I took a Percocet for, I have a Percocet for that because it can get painful. And my arms, the back of my arms are really um, in a lot of pain still too. So when I say a lot, it's tolerable. It's not, I mean, tolerable because yeah, I took a half a Percocet, I guess, but it's not like, oh, I'm going to die, which is how I kind of felt the week after. So I got that done. I got my upper and lower abdomen um, lipoed, and then I got my flanks lipoed, and I got a fat transfer to my buttocks, which again, I'll get into all that. And um, I don't know how this is all going to turn out because I'm still in recovery and you don't see final results from my suction for like six weeks. And some people say up to six months and up to a year for the final, final results. So this will be a process. So I thought, okay, why not just kind of do this and like, it's not like boobs where it's like, this how boobs is, this is okay. You know what, um, this is more of a, like I said, this is like a process, like a journey liposuction is. Um, and yeah, you, you definitely have to watch what you eat and you have to continue with exercise and stuff like that. But it is like, it is like a jump start, which is why, is what I needed. Um, taking the fat cells out um, was something and just like seeing the sculpt, the way my body is sculpted now, the shape of my body, it gives me so much motivation. Like I cannot wait to work out and like I eat really healthy because I want to just see how tight I can get that because it feels so tight when I take my girdle off because I ha you have to wear a binder. Um, you can wear, I'm going to change my Spanx now. So after week two, I'm going to be changing into my Spanx. Um, but the binder was great because this is not what I originally had and I have like this like full body suit they put me in. Um, and so this binder they use for tummy tucks I've been wearing with the compression garment underneath and um, to keep the swelling down. And when I take it off to shower, um, it you, I can see the shape of what my body is, and it feels so tight. It's very bizarre for me to not have. I will say my back and it was the first thing I noticed. Like the day the day after when I went in, um, I was like naked, and my mom took like a picture for me just so I could see, and I was like shocked at like there was no rolls. Like that was an instant one for me. My stomach still had 
uh, like my like little chub and I was like ah um, and it still kind of does a little bit it's definitely gone down thank God but it's it's tight it's very it's such a weird feeling for someone who's always had um, fat in their stomach like it's it's, it's weird <laughs> like it's just think about that like you let's say like if you've been overweight your whole life think about now all of a sudden you were just given a six pack not that I have a six pack but you know what I mean like it's there's no there's like no extra skin and it's really really tight so to me it feels like I have this six pack like I'm walking around like when I go to the shop I'm like damn like this is weird this is what skinny people feel like it's a very weird um a weird sensation and a really happy sensation and I hate saying that because I don't I don't want first of all and I gotta say this too I don't want anyone to think like I hated my body before I, I think I was the opposite I was actually I was happy with my body. I actually let love my body. I mean, I showed it every chance I got. I was comfortable in my body. Um, the switch for me was when I found out how many people got liposuction and the kinds of people that got liposuction. And I was like, well, that's why they look like they do because they're getting this, this surgery and they look beautiful. And I just the more people I found out that I was getting it done, especially the fat transfers and stuff like that, you know, at first I was the same way. I was like, that's not fair. They just, you know, they bought that. But they look freaking good, so who cares? You know what I mean? And so, and then when I saw the the bat wings ones, I because originally I just wanted to get those done, but I'm like, you know what? I should just do it. I hate like my stomach has been an insecurity, always has been too. And people are mean. I'm not gonna say the internet made me get liposuction, I definitely didn't. But the first thought I had waking up from anesthesia, normally when I've had anesthesia with my boobs, first thing I have is like, oh my god, I'm alive. I made it through. My first thought I had because I was in so much pain and I was so much nauseous, nauseous which normally doesn't happen after um, anesthesia for me, um, I was just in so much pain and it hurt so bad. I just felt like I was going to puke, 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 and I had nothing in me to puke because you can't eat before surgery and stuff. And so I was like, what am I going to puke up? Um, and it just was so painful and everything. And I was just like thinking like, fuck Instagram, fuck Instagram comments, fuck the mean people that made me think I needed to get this done to my body. That was like the first thought you think of when you come out of anesthesia, which they say is like truthful thoughts. Um, it just made me sad, not for me, because I, you know, I know I'm, I know whatever my result is, it's going to be much better than what it was before for me, personally. Um, and I know there's probably some people who will see it and be like, bitch, don't even look any different. You look the same or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm fine. Whatever. So it's not, it's, it wasn't for an Instagram thing. It wasn't like, well, people say I'm fat on Instagram, so I'm here to get like well section. It was never like that <laughs> at all. Trust me. Oh my God, I would not, no. Um, but, you know, I start thinking about other people. I'm like, fuck, people are so fucking mean. Let's say someone didn't have terrible arms. Like, and maybe mine weren't terrible. And my stomach, I don't think was, I don't think I would, my body, like, so I'm saying, my body was always really cute but people are fucking assholes but I see on my sister's picture too there's one of my sister like sleeping with her bird and like you look fat while you're sleeping or your arms look fat or your face looks fat. it's like oh that's a whole other video but it, it pisses me off so much because these people you can cause someone to have insecurities that they never knew they had and like I said I've had body insecurities for a long time so this is like a nothing new I swear to goodness someone called me fat is like bitch heard this since fucking the third grade like kids made fun of me all the time for being fat so I was just like it, it's nothing new, not to say it doesn't hurt, but it's nothing new. And so, I'm someone, I've always preached this, as you guys know, I've got my boobs done, I get my lips filled, I have air extensions, like I wear makeup, like all this shit. If you're not happy with something, fix it. Um, I mean, there is a thing of like going overboard, you know, I, I definitely, my face for instance, there's a lot of things about my face that I, I could see fixing, but I'm, I'm truly happy like I don't want to like ruin a good thing like I like my face I think I have a very pretty face you know others may disagree like you're an ugly bitch but I think I have a pretty face and so but there are certain things like people have always made fun of like this like saying I don't know I don't know how it's like I'm not saying this is like an, an insult but people say it in an insulting way like you look like you have fuzz or you're downs and like I said I don't personally find offense to it but they say it in such an insulting way because I just have a flatter bridge and um you know if I were to aesthetically fix something in my face, yeah, I would like it to be a little more eyes brought in, but I don't want to, like, there's a thing of going overboard is what I'm saying. Like, I don't need to fuck it up, you know what I mean? I love my lips. A lot of people hate my lips. I love my lips. Like, I just wish they were even bigger. Like, I just love big lips. I'm an over-the-top person. Like, my surgeon asked me when he said, how much do you want your butt? I'm like, well, I like, I'm not subtle. I'm not, like, trying to go for a natural look here. Like, I like Coke bottle. Like, I want to look like a Coke bottle, you know? So, anyways, um, a little tangent right there, but... Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of when I woke up from thinking. It just made me, it made me sad because people are so mean about people's bodies. And again, if you're watching this video, if you made it this far, like, don't get like perception because other people are telling you you look gross or disgusting. Like, definitely, like I said, mine are such deep-rooted insecurities. And I say if you're super insecure about something, fix it. I see, I see nothing wrong with that. And it's like, 
you know, and some people are like, well, just work out, don't be, you know, that's easy for some people, but some people need that jump start, especially when, you know, you're far gone. I mean, I think gastric bypass, a lot of people are like, you need gastric bypass and stuff like that. And honestly, you guys, I mean, I don't know what I look like on camera, but I mean, some people think I'm literally like 300 pounds and I'm not, I'm 200, which is, it's overweight, but it's definitely does not qualify me for a gastric, which I would get if I was like, if I was 300 pounds, I, I would totally get that. Um, you know, sometimes you need that jump start. I get it. I understand it. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, but here's the thing about lipo on my, um, upper and lower abdomen. It's so tight and you wear this like tummy tuck that you really can't even eat that much anyways. It's not that my, it almost feels like your stomach shrunk, but it didn't. Obviously they didn't shrink my stomach. They, you know, like a gastric or a sleeve or something like that. It just feels very tight. So it feels uncomfortable to eat too much, um, which I don't overeat, but even eating, like I have four pieces of shrimp that have 210 calories and I used to be able to eat like six of them. Um, and even after four, I'm like, oh, I'm really full and I have to like lay down. So then I like, okay, I have to eat three, you know what I mean? So, um, and that, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah, so the biggest improvement I see is in my abdomen and my back and that makes me super happy. Um, so far the slowest improvements have been in my arms and my butt and especially my butt and I'm getting to that right now. So I got a fat transfer to my butt from my stomach. I had quite a bit of fat there. I know a lot of people, like a lot of thinner girls, um, don't have the best experience with it because they say the fat doesn't take to the butt. Um, because there is a chance the fat can't, won't take to your butt. Basically fat will be dead. Like as soon as you get that fat off, you have to like move that into the butt quick. <laughs> that sounds so crazy, but you have to move it quick because it's basically like dead and it has to like reattach itself to blood vessels and all that stuff like that. And it takes a while to do. It's why you can't sit down. I'll show you. This is what I've been sitting on. If I have, if I have to have to like go to a doctor's appointment or something, this is a booty buddy and you put your thighs on there, you put your thighs here and your butt hangs. Uh, another question I get, I know I'll get is like, how do you go to the bathroom? Obviously you sit to go to the bathroom. You just sit like you do. You have to sit on your butt at some point, but they say try and stay off your butt for six weeks or sit on one of those. So I've been doing really good at doing that. Um, however, my butt, I feel like doesn't look any different. So I don't know. I mean, maybe mine didn't take because they do say the swelling, like a lot of people's uh, reviews and stuff of their fat transfer. They said, you know, they could tell the difference right away and the swelling does go down. But I don't want my swelling to go down because I feel like it's not even like that. I'm not, and it's not, it's not like a doctor's fault or anything like that. It literally could just be the way your body d can't take it. My body re doesn't react great to surgery in the sense that it doesn't take like a lot of people's do. Does. Do? Does. <laughs> um, like a lot of people's surgeries do. Um, so, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, so maybe mine just didn't take, like my boobs for instance, like they... They sag. I mean, mine do. I got a lift. I got a side lift. I mean, they just, they sag. And I, I've been wearing bras every single day while I sleep. Like, so sometimes your body just reacts. And I think of that with my butt. I've been literally just on my side. Like, haven't, I've sat maybe on that booty thing, like, twice. Like, coming home. Well, I mean, I guess maybe, like, a few times. But, like, I'm trying to think, like, in the car, maybe, like, five or six times, like, going to and from my doctor's. And, like, one time to go get my eyebrows waxed. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, people will have to go back to work. And some people are like, oh, I sat on my butt after two weeks and stuff. So, and mine's only been two weeks, so I don't see, but maybe it's in my head, because I'm like, it looks different. <laughs> I was asking Angela, and he's like, no, you can tell it's fuller at the top. And I'm like, I feel like what they're saying, that maybe should be nice, but also because I am swollen still on my back and stuff, maybe once the back goes down, it'll just be more, oh, bam. I'm hoping, I'm not giving up hope in the sense of I'm going to just sit on my butt, which is how I kind of thought for a minute. I'm just like, well, if it's not going to take anyways, I might as well just sit on my butt, because I'm not going to go live through all of um, March, just because March 29th would be my six weeks. And I, I'm not gonna like. I mean, I was just like, I'm not gonna wait that long, and just if it's not gonna take. But, but at the same time, I should try to be patient. And maybe some things are gonna change around. I don't know. You know what I mean? So for me, that's maybe the most disappointing part of it all. Um, and that's the other kind of tricky thing is you have to kind of eat for your butt. They say you're supposed to eat carbs and stuff for your butt, but you can't eat too much because of the lipo. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a tricky thing. So um, that's what I got done. Uh, I guess I could go in. I mean, that's a whole, I don't know if that should be a whole separate video because there's just so much. That week after, like, waking up with so much pain and nauseous. I was so nauseous that, like, for that six hours after, oh, my God, I was so nauseous. It was it was awful. And I had the anti-nausea pill that's, like, 100 bucks and everything. Um, so nauseous. Uh, I was good, like, the day after. I was like, oh, my God, like, this is, like, literally nothing. I feel nothing. So I must have still been under anesthesia because I was like, I literally don't feel anything. I went, I was like, hey, everyone. 
painful though. Like I was literally, you wouldn't tell I had surgery. And then like the next day I was like, ooh, it's a little painful. Ooh. And then I got so lightheaded that weekend. I had my surgery on a Wednesday. Saturday and Sunday were the worst. I was so dizzy. I couldn't even stand to go to the bathroom. Like I couldn't, I could not make it to the bathroom. Like I had to pee in my bed. Like, well not my bed, I was staying in a hotel, which we had tarps down and stuff like that. That's the other thing. Oh my gosh. Okay. You need tarps. You need tarps for your car, your bed, everything for that first week you are going to leak. I don't even know, like, how, where are you leaking from? Because you have drains to catch that fluid, which kind of looks like blood. And the leaking looks like blood. It looks like you're bleeding out your pores and stuff like that. But, um, oh, my God, it was it was everywhere. It was so messy. I had, like, a moo-moo, and I just, just bled through it. Just Well, it's not blood. It's liquid. But, you know, it looks like blood. Fluids, I should say. And I was so dizzy, and I was losing so much fluid. And so they tell you to drink juices and stuff, which have a lot of sugar in it. So I was drinking a lot of juices because I was so lightheaded. I couldn't shower for five days until my drains were out. They're like, oh, well, you can shower with the drains. Just be careful. But I couldn't, I couldn't even stand. I was just like, I would just, pa I would just pass out. It was insane. And I would have like my juices and stuff. So I was eating, actually I was eating quite a lot that first week because I felt with my Percocets and stuff like that, it would make me really nauseous if I didn't eat. So I was eating a lot and then I also get lightheaded. So I was like eating a lot. I don't know what a lot is really, but I was eating a lot, but it just, I was, whew, it was very bad. And that Sunday before I got my drains out, I was going to die because then my drains were in my hips and I was just like, and you have to like lay on your side. So like rotating with your drain, it just really hurts. And I was kind of pulling and uh, it was, it was bad. And my drains getting taken out, like were not bad at all. My nurse is so, she's like a godsend. She is like so gentle when she removes my stitches and my um, drain. She's like amazing. But um, it does hurt. Lipo is definitely the most <laughs> intense recovery I've dealt with so far and also the most intense pain. Um, so where I have like little scars or stitches or holes on both elbows, um, three across my hip, two on my hips and then one kind of like right above my vagina and I have three on my back. Um, which I actually will have shown on my second channel. I don't think it's up yet, but I did vlog it on my second channel. I kind of took off when I was in the shower and like washing this. I was down here having breakfast and I just showed you guys my like like my holes in the back. They're just like little, they're like little pinholes. They're not that, you know, evasive. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And of course, feel free to ask me your guys' questions and maybe I'll do a whole like liposuction Q&A and then also just another like kind of follow-up video and if I have anything to add or if I remember anything, I'll say it in the next video. But where I'm at now, two weeks post-op, like I said, it's, it's achy. Um, I mean, there's still like pain. I'm still wearing my garment on my sleeve and my binder on my stomach. Um, I would not recommend full body lipo. I thought about before, when, right before I went in, I was like, maybe I should get my thighs. I was like, no, no, you're gonna lose too much like blood and stuff. Like that's not a good idea. And oh, thank God he said that because I was so lightheaded. I'm really bad though. Also, that should be noted. Like anytime I can't, I can't um, donate blood. When I did one time where you actually have to squeeze, like drawing blood, I will pass out. You have to give me juice. But like when you donate and then you're just like pumping blood. No, I did that one time and it ended in disaster. Like oxygen masks on me, like it's bad. And I've always been like that. When I got shots as a kid, I was always passing out, so I just must have like low blood sugar or something. I don't know. So I'm, I'm I am bad with that, anyways. But I was losing so much and I was so lightheaded. So that was really bad. But um, yeah. So I'm still on my fluids. Um, I like I said, you can't you eat regular food. You just gotta eat clean, especially because this is a time too where your body's kind of being trained, like where your fat's gonna go and like. With lipo as well, like if you maybe you won't gain fat in your stomach, but it could go other places. So you just gotta like train yourself, and also you don't want to look like disproportion. So like let's say you get your stomach done, but or let's say you don't get your arms done, but you get your stomach done. You don't want your arms to look like that, or even my thighs. I have to wash my thighs and my legs, or my face, or my forearms. Um, I actually wanted to get my forearms done, but they couldn't because it's so like veiny, and so you can't really get forearms. So again, I have to just like watch my diet and like actually lose the weight myself because it's gonna look crazy if my arms start getting really skinny up here, and then like I have these big forearms still. So. I'm personally really excited to like work out because you do have to keep a healthy lifestyle and you have to, you know, all around you like have a healthy diet, healthy exercise, all that stuff like that. So it's not like it's just a quick fix. Okay, now I'm skinny. I can eat whatever I want. Like definitely not. So yeah, like I said, that's kind of where I'm at at the two weeks. I don't know how I feel about it to be honest. That's why I'm like, should I make a video? I don't know. But these are my feelings. How I'm feeling at the moment. You know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, after the six weeks, you'll be so happy. And and probably, and I'm, I'm thinking, yes, whatever, probably is better than what I was before. But, you know, in this moment, I'm like, is it worth it? I don't know. And the fact that I have to stay off my butt and I can't really sit or wear pants. You can't wear underwear. Like, I have this, like, little smock thing on. You can't wear underwear. You can't wear pants um, or anything for, you know, now I have to have another month of it. Like, I've already been through two weeks and I feel like it's, it's hell. It's been so boring. Like, I, it's 
it's a doozy. So we'll see what the results. And I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure anything will be better than what it was before. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to regret it. Um, but having to know all this about the recovery, you know, it's definitely something you have to think about and plan about a lot more. I think I was thinking in March I'm going to be you know, back at it with my music videos and stuff, but not, and not even that, like, you know, months after, you could still be swollen, and I know people it's happened to that still say they are, like, fatter than they were before because it's months later and they're still swollen, so it's scary, it's kind of scary, you kind of have to, like, not scary and, like, oh, you're gonna die, just scary, like, you may be working with a different body in a year, you know what I mean, so that's something to think about, um, I did kind of not rush into it, but I, it's not something I put a lot of thought into. Um, and kind of I did that on purpose because I thought if I thought about it too long, I'm going to be like, no, I'll just, you know, diet or, oh, no, I'm fine. My body's fine. Um, but I just was recently hearing so many stories of girls getting lipo and fat transfers. And then I saw the arms and I'm like, you know what? This is going to make me happy. I know it will. Like, I know it will. And, um, I, again, I don't want anyone to think, like, all my body positivity has, like, gone out the window. You know, I still have my thighs and my, my thick legs and stuff like that. And I'm not going to be – it's not like – and they said that, too. They're like, you don't really lose weight. It's not like you're instantly skinny. It just gives you shape to your body. It gives you, like – obviously, it sucks the fat cells out, but it just gives you a different, like – it's, like, almost like body sculpting in a sense. Um, so, anyways. <sighs> oh, this is a lot. I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. Well. So the thing, oh my god, and I was constipated for a week too. You don't poop for like a week after, which is also crazy. Uh, and the first time I did, it hurt so bad. It still kind of hurts when I do, I'm not going to lie. And yeah, but the, like I said, it, like love yourself for sure. And I know not everyone can take six weeks off and not everyone can afford it. So it's like, I'm also a very firm believer as like, if you love yourself, change it. But also, if you can't change it for whatever reason, you don't have the money or whatever, like also love yourself today because... Yeah, maybe you're like, oh, maybe in a year I get life possession, which would be, it's cool. Like, yeah, do it. But also, don't forget to love yourself in the now and live your life in the now. Like, I still did a music video, like, a week before because I'm like, well, I still want to have fun. I still want to do my music and stuff. I'm not going to wait until I'm skinny. If I waited till I was skinny to do all I wanted to do, like, music, music videos, whatever, you know, nothing would ever get done because for the past 15 years, I've been overweight. So, my life would have been really awful. So definitely live in the now and accept you who you are in the now because that's important. Not only accept it, but embrace it and flaunt it who you are now because, and that's another reason I wanted to do the thick video is because I loved who I was. That body, I did love that. And I thought it was a beautiful thing. And I thought it was something that I should share and embrace more than I have in any video, which is why I had my stomach out and stuff. Cause I'm like, this is sexy to me. And so many people, that video got so much hate being like, you're fat you're disgusting, there's a difference between fat and thick, all these people are obese, just, and it just, it just proves the reason why I wanted to do it, it's like, these people are just so disgusting to me, it's like, that's what you're going to base someone's happiness, I'm happy in the video, someone's value of who they are, or what they do, it's like, based, like, I want to call myself thick, why do you have a problem, like, why, why? and I've called myself fat, before. I have a song called Fat Chicks, but it's never good enough for people, people are just like, are not happy, they're like, oh no, you have to be this, you have to call yourself this, like, myself skinny and people like who fucking cares what anyone calls themselves if I want to think of myself as skinny I, you know there was a bigger girl I watched on YouTube who's like I'm not plus size it's like okay if you don't want to be considered plus size don't call yourself plus size like I get it you know who cares like who cares about like what you label yourself as it's so annoying anyways this is a whole other tangent but um <laughs> that's my video and like I said I wasn't ever trying to keep it or hide it um it was more of something like eh, I don't know if I feel like I need to discuss this but at the same time I'm like it's a huge part of my life. Obviously, it's going to be a huge change for me. And there's just a lot of stuff that people don't talk about. And a lot of people don't talk about that they're getting liposuction. And people just think, oh, they worked out really hard. Or they did a lot of squats to get that butt. And I'm telling you, like, anyone you see on social media, I just so many people have had lipo, like, more than you'll ever believe. And it's like, it's fine that they don't have to talk about it. But it also gives a false representation of girls. Like, when I was younger, I would look at Britney Spears' hair. I was like, why don't I have hair like her? And my mom's like, she has a different texture, which... We didn't know about extensions. Like, she was wearing extensions, you know what I mean? Like, go buy that hair, you know what I mean? So I feel like that's kind of my thing here, is being as real and authentic as I possibly can and transparent, and it's not, um, you know, it's, I, I just, I guess I just don't know if I wanted to share because I don't know if I was ready for, like, oh, you're lazy or this, but it's like, whatever. <laughs> People are going to say what they want anyways, and I was like, I'll just talk about it because I just feel like that's, like I said, what I do here, just kind of be real. So that's where I'm at, and that's where I, um, I'm at two weeks post-op. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you guys want more videos about this or you want an update, definitely thumbs up the video and let me know because I totally will. Um, yeah, this is kind of my uniform for the moment, so 
Uh, I love you guys. And yeah, they said I could shower right away, but the drains were in the way and I was dizzy. And then um, I fully showered fine after I got the drains out. So it's a lot less evasive than breasts where you can't like, can't get them wet and they can't shower. It's like, that's a crazy thing. Anyways, at this point, I'm rambling. I love you guys. I hope you guys found this video um, helpful, which is what the point of it was. And I love you guys so much. And thanks, guys, for supporting me. And thanks, guys, for being awesome about it all. And I love you. And I'll talk to you guys real soon. Here are my kisses. Smell all my fishies. Bye, guys.